All right, let's grab our reference texture import. Keep this down here so I can see it. Uh, we're going to streaming salacious. My salacious folder has a front and we'll go ahead and load that up. Select it and add it. Let's go ahead and ma ma ma. Okay. Oh, is my sound working? Yeah. Okay. My mic's on. And you don't need to hear desktop audio, so I'll just keep that off. All right. So we got this. I'm going to go ahead and scale this up a little bit. We'll knock this opacity down. We'll hit Z. So Z to turn it, go into widget mode. Uh, Shift Z to turn it off. Z to turn it back on. And then Z to go into just sculpting mode. I think we'll go old school. We'll see what new techniques we want to use, but for now we're just going to grab a Z sphere, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode, hit X to go across X symmetry here. And generally speaking, when you pull something out, we'll, we'll verify. We'll go in here to our floor and we're Z forward, Y up. Great. So again, X symmetry is turned on. So I'm going to put this right where his belly is and then we'll go into the top and we'll put this where his, I don't know, I don't know what gender these things are. Uh, <laughs> We'll put this up here in the shoulder area and then Q will go to the side and then to the side again and we'll pull out some arms and we'll just do a, you know what, I'll go ahead and match. We could rotate this into an A pose. I'll go ahead and match the reference. So Q, W, E and R. So Q is draw, that'll allow us to draw. So if we want to go say, uh, put on some hips on this one. We'll say Q and then go in here to draw. And then I'm going to say, as I start drawing, if you hold on shift, it'll snap to the previous size. I don't really care too much about these being the right size necessarily. Um, and I'm going to pull all the way down to the foot. Now, there is, let me see if I can find, I guess you don't really see it in the old school version. I guess maybe you can see it a little bit here. Yeah, this thing. So. He's sitting, so he's <laughs> every time you see uh, these things sitting, they got kind of a really relaxed pose, and everybody's got their legs up. So I do have to account for an extra bit of leg there from this reference, but that's okay. So we're gonna go all the way down here to eh, let's go down to the end of the foot here, and then we're just gonna hit Q, and we'll just tap, and that'll be our ankle. Q and tap, and that'll be our knee, and then we'll turn that off, and we'll make it so it's. Uh, like I said, just a little bit of extra sitting. Just whoosh. there we go. So sitting on just like a chair or something for now. I think that's enough space. I'm trying to look at just disjointed reference right now to see if that's about right. Yeah, I think he's got a pretty long lower leg. Let me scooch this up. Yeah, they're about even. Okay, we'll pull that out just a bit. Um. Yes, thank you, John Yu. Excellent, excellent. Cool, hello everybody. So, Shift-Z to bring our reference back. Oh, one thing we need to do is set our camera. So, while I'm going through here and just putting things into their place, I'm gonna go to Movie, Timeline, Show, and we're gonna put a little dot in here just by tapping. If you ever need to get rid of it, just click and drag it out of there, and then put another dot in there. That'll go ahead and be our front view, so and then we can we don't need to see this anymore so we'll just turn that off movie timeline show uh yeah 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 all right all right so we got the again right at the very top we'll go q to draw and he's got a long neck here um oops sorry put in another extra bit there so uh you know we'll keep this here we'll go ahead and scale this up a bit again q e r and then again Q one more time and the head I'm not overly concerned about like going through here or Z sketch or anything we can talk about it a little bit if you want but basically just putting the proportions in there and then moving the stuff around so head neck shoulders legs knees and toes we'll go ahead and move these in all right all right I think we got what we need here and then you know what this is an interesting bit it kind of comes out and then there, you know, I'm going to move this back just a tiny bit. We'll go ahead and put the fingers and toes in there since they're so simple. If you ever move it around multiple, just tap S and make your draw size very small so it doesn't influence any other Z spheres. And then you can go through and so one side, one side. And once we're done doing it from just this view, because this can be a little disingenuous. Um, 
as to where all these things are falling sometimes. Q. There we go. So now, uh, when we're moving our camera around, we use our arrow keys to snap it back. And then there we go. So we got our, and I'm just going to scoot these over. We'll, we'll keep it, you know, regular, but where it should be, but we'll just kind of scoot them out a little bit from each other. And then one more, we'll do the hands. So again, we got the wrist and then we got the palm. And then from that palm is going to kind of sp spread out to another three fingers. So I'm just going to really quickly go in here and say one, two, three, and then one more pass, one, and then scoot it out, two, and then three. There we go. And then we'll just put these uh, generally into place. Where is that? That's just going straight over the knee. You know, we'll go to the end of the finger for all of these just because it's a little bit easier. Unless you put it inside the body, which isn't helpful. And then we'll go Q and then just draw these little knuckles. So this is generally where the hands are going to go and the proportions and the volumes that we'll need to start finishing this little guy out. Cool. All right. Uh, and the ears and stuff we'll do later. Yeah, I think that'll work. So let's go ahead and put this into an A pose. It's going to look a little weird because, like I said, most of the time you see him, he's just kind of super lounging. So he's not real an upright walking around type, but we'll make do. So rotate this out. And again, you can rotate along an, a joint here. So you just grab one of these Z spheres and rotate it. It'll do that type of rotation. You can grab the bone in between and that'll do that type of rotation. So we're just going to grab the bones here. And uh, this is more of a T pose, uh, but we'll go ahead and relax his arms just a bit into more of a neutral state uh, because he's not going to be doing any major um, like crazy poses by any stretch. Again, he's pretty chill. So, and I'm going to spread these fingers out. So if you ever want to go in here and dynamesh, we got plenty of space. There's ways around it. And generally speaking, if I get in any tight areas, uh, I'll go through and just work on the hand separately and then merge it together later. But just for now, we'll go ahead and make it a little easier for ourselves. So kind of a thumb that goes like this and then kind of a finger that kind of pops out. It kind of goes like this, Q. Again, just kind of looking at my reference here, there's kind of an interesting kind of knuckle and then down and then like a little hook uh, for the fingers there. Same thing for the thumb, yeah, kind of. Something like this maybe, I don't know. So there's that, and then the legs here, real long dancer's legs on these things, actually. What was I looking up? It was the Kowakian monkey lizard. We'll keep this up just in case I need to know more about it. Go back here to all. Monk, sometimes referred to as monkeys, race of semi sentient, sentient reptilian creatures. Hmm. Cool. Um, excellent. Perfect. Yes, these spheres are always a cool thing to go back to. Uh, I don't use them a ton, but when I do, I enjoy it. Um, excellent. Ah, oh, Gremlin, that'd be a good one too. Uh, yeah, I think Gremlins was 80s. Let me look that up. Gremlins film series. 84. I was three years old when that came out. I remember, was it Gremlins that scared the hell out of me? Or some movie, maybe it's Critters. Critters might have scared the hell out of me. Is that the one that had the, the geode that was the egg? Um, so I remember watching it with, I think it was a group of older kids. <laughs> and I was a little young when Critters come out. 86. Okay, so I was five years old. That's That tracks. Critters might have been new and I might have been a little young for it. I don't know. I vaguely remember Critters scaring me. Predator scared me. Alien scared me. The original Alien. Because um, I was very young watching those. <laughs> I think in my, I don't know, uncle's house or something. All right. Hmm. So I'm going to look at this one more time real quick here. And I think what happened is we got a little foreshortening uh, going on here. So I'm going to take this W and scoot all of this out 
uh, along the bone here. Uh, w. Shift C. Let's see if I can remember which one I want to do. Not E, not R. W will move kind of in a bendy way. I'm just going to get some more length in the forearm here. I think the bicep is generally right, but the forearm is way too short. Um, can I mask an invert and offset? Oh, and it's probably going to offset one direction, isn't it? Okay, here's what we can do. I'm not going to finagle this. I'm just going to do it in the geometry. So I'm going to fix this arm, but I'm going to do it in the geo. So let's talk about this as an adaptive skin. If we hit A by default, it's going to turn into the adaptive skin, and it's going to look low res, but then you turn on your polyframe, and it's actually quite high res. There's a lot of geometry going on there. That's because uh, with your Z-sphere selected, you have an adaptive skin, and it's set to dynamesh resolution. Turn that down to zero, hit A, and then A again to toggle it off, and now you'll see, okay, simple geometry. And in fact, you can even go simpler, density of one. Now you just have a very simple geo, and every Z-sphere gets its own poly group, which is useful because I'm going to say make adaptive skin, go in here. Um, we have a, this is our Z-sphere version, so if I hit A, there's our Z-spheres. If I go out here, here is our skin, this is our adaptive skin that it made. This is what I really want to use. x is still turned on, so right away I can start breaking this up into how I want to work on it. Um, you can go through here and say control shift tap and control shift drag and then tap and tap and tap and tap or you can go through here grab generally all the pieces of the subtools you want then do control shift Q that'll polygroup grow all different than grabbing a little beast and doing control shift A that's visibility grow all so we'll grab all these pieces control shift Q and then we'll say split hidden um, now I want to extend this out right so I could go through here and say you know what let's do control shift Q again and I'm going to say split one more time and I'm going to say, okay, you need to be a longer forearm about, you know what, let's, we'll do humanoid. So bottom of the rib cage, great trochanter of his leg out here to his wrist. Seems like he's, his upper body's fairly regularly proportioned ish. Um, oh, actually I got another, I got another image. Let me pull this in and we'll just double check texture import. This one looks like it could give me some info. So I'm going to go ahead and say grab this one and add it. And this one is only going to be temporary. I'm going to snap back to this original one. Uh, so we'll just move this over here. And I'll use this as our guide for. I'm going to rotate his arm around here. So now we have, well, first let's make sure he's the right size. Um, leg up, feet. Yeah, I might shorten his legs a little bit too. And then arm. Turn on our, there's our bicep, there's our forearm, and then this is where our hand is. So, yeah, about right. Let's scale this up just a bit too. Uh, if we do scale as is, it's going to scale to the world axis, which is right down the middle, so it's going to go towards the center. I'm going to turn on local symmetry and then turn off dynamic. So we can go ahead and just scale that locally. And then if I want to bridge these back, all I got to do is merge it down. We can go to our Z modeler brush, BZM, hover over an edge, and we'll say bridge two holes, U to U. And we'll just bridge them back. Um, yeah, and I like to work on the arms separately. In fact, I also like to work on the hands separately. Uh, but we'll go ahead and leave those together for now. Uh, back here, the body, the legs, I'll work on a little bit separately. So I'm going to grab these, Control Shift Q and split and then we have a torso and the head we'll go ahead and say and this one we'll just control shift tap and we'll say split hidden um yeah okay i think we're in good shape so shift z we'll put this back into place here and maybe i do want to because this one's got some good info too we can do we can do both so we can say okay z i'm going to shrink this one down a bit and we're going to use this as one camera and we're going to scoot this over a bit so we'll have two pieces of reference we can snap between so like i said before movie timeline show movie menu timeline show go drag that off because we don't need any more and we're going to say okay you are about here and we'll put in another dot and then we'll scoot this over we'll shrink it down just a bit just so we're matching and you're about here so we'll just kind of swing between those two and we can just use our arrow keys to kind of snap back and forth Alrighty, because uh, when I mirror that over, it looked like he also got a little chubbier in the neck and the belly. Uh. <laughs> yeah, 
yes, that was, uh, yeah, uh, let me see here, uh, this one, I, this particular one, I think, is a prop, or a, not a prop, but something that was made afterwards, like a life-size, this is, I think this is the actual prop from the movie, I don't have any of the really old, eh, this one might be from the movie, I'm not sure, um, sorry, let me get another drink. I've been working on ZBrush since I graduated Ringling 05 or 06, and I started using it like sophomore year. So, five, six, five, four, 2004, I've been using ZBrush maybe, 2003, 2004, 2000. Yeah, I think 2004 is probably pretty accurate. All right, so, um, okay. Now it's just fun and starting to work. And generally speaking, is there anything interesting I wanna go over? Not really. Um, and then this is just geometry now um, and we're, we're kind of capping out at this point so some, some things something that I like to do is go in here to Z plug in scale master and we're gonna go in here and say uh, ZBrush scale unify and we'll just go ahead and knock everything down this will essentially sit everything into a cube the bounding box into a cube give or take um, and then that just makes sure that ever all the defaults that ZBrush has it's working within uh, those defaults so we're in good shape else is turned on is fine and we can just go through here and just start uh, dynameshing um, if we dynamesh it'll go ahead and close any holes we have automatically if it's also going to build in the faceting that we have here so if you don't want to do that you could manually go through here and say okay let's with our z modeler brush bzm close a hole here you could even go through here and say oh crease pg hit Control d a couple times get a nice smooth result and now when i dynamesh uh, turn off blur, just dynamesh there. You always want to hit no, I don't always, but generally speaking, when you're dynameshing, you don't want to freeze your subdivision levels. And now you'll get a nice smooth dynamesh result. Of course, we're probably going to pull that resolution up a bit. Of course, your dynamesh is going to be over here, geometry dynamesh. Um, so I'm using my custom menu here, and I'll give you a resource for that. Here in my YouTube channel, uh, underneath created playlists, you won't need that. Apparently I do. Because, ah, what is up? Good. Internet's super slow. Or YouTube is. Uh, underneath here is Intro to ZBrush New and Updated. So you can go check that out. And in that playlist will be... I'll go ahead and link it here. In that playlist will be uh, a bunch of the basics. And in there is like making a custom menu and setting up custom interface stuff as well as on this page here, my station page, anything with a little folded down tab is like the ZBrush What's New stuff. So here's the intro to ZBrush, five our videos, and then all of these are the What's New. So you can check that out as well if that's any help at all to you for resources. So we have X symmetry turned on. We have X, just having X on your keyboard is gonna turn on X symmetry by default. And we're X, oh. <laughs> course since we did our ZBrush scale we got to go back and reset so bloop bloop pull those off and one more time pop it in and a new one okay now we don't need that anymore uh, if ZBrush were to crash right now uh, what we would want to do is go in here we can always just do a quick save that's going to be nine on your keyboard but it will get rid of this this won't load in with your project so if you do want to save this go in here to texture save spotlight and we'll just go ahead and store this in our reference folder as um salacious ref z spotlight so i can always bring this back in anything else i need to do quick save will bring my timeline back in or file save your project files will bring your timeline back in i believe if it if you want to play it safe though, you can go in here and say again, movie timeline show or movie timeline save. And we'll just say ZBrush movie. ZMO, is that right? Yeah, timeline. There we go. All right. Uh, okay, so we've got a head here. <laughs> Let's go ahead and... Uh, so while we're moving this stuff around, obviously here's the basic of the Dynamesh. You're gonna pull this out and it's gonna tax your geometry and then you can just control drag and it'll re-Dynamesh. Uh, and you can also go in here to BSH, grab your snake hook brush, turn on Tessellation, what is that? Sculptures Pro? <laughs> Tessellation Master? No, Sculptures Pro. And this will allow you to update your geometry or pull your geometry 
and, and updated on the fly. So that's kind of a fun one. Now, caveat, while we're using this, you'll see it's doing something weird in here. That's because if I hit Control D a couple times and go into like my clay brush, for example, turn off this, turn off this. Um, as you're sculpting, it's going to pull through your reference. It's going to uh, like sculpt through your reference. You can also do this for poly painting, which we'll probably do later. But if you don't want that, you can go in here to brush, samples, turn off spotlight projection. And that will turn it off. And you can always turn it back on, no big deal. It's, it's useful to use both. So again, ESH for a snake hook, Sculptors Pro. Now when we pull it out, we'll get a, um, oh, we also have subdivision levels. I forgot to turn that on. We'll say delete lower. You can just, or just control drag to read Dynamesh. That'll get rid of your subdivision levels. So Dynamesh automatically just nukes any subdivision levels and just gives you a Dynamesh mesh. And then we got the general shape. Um, from the side view, obviously that's not gonna work. So we'll just work, work this from multiple angles. If we, do we have, I have a side view? Yeah, kind of. It's kind of a back semi three quarter view. I'm just gonna eyeball it. Um, I'll show you this here. I'm just kind of a back three quarter. So I'm just gonna kind of look at that uh, as we go and We'll just do what we can. So um, we're gonna go through here, and again, snake hook brush is just fine. Now, one thing to keep in mind is your snake hook brush can use uh, tessellation. Uh, your move brush won't. It's just gonna move. So that's if you want to move, just make your make sure you use your BSH. Oops, your snake hook brush. So there's a little beak. I'm gonna do a semi open mouth here, just because it'll be a little bit easier to rig later if I'm so inclined and then we'll go ahead and just use our standard brush and we can go ahead and test slate while we're doing that why not so uh, standard brush just turn off our polyframe so we can see what we're doing here smooth um, clay brush clay build up standard brush you know all your favorites we're gonna do and we're gonna go into a real ugly baby phase uh, for a while uh, and this goes out to like all the way to the corners of his head like he's got the biggest weirdest mouth here and then uh, we want to work it from all angles so you know what so we'll go in here hold down shift and turn off this eyeball that'll turn off everything except for his head also I like to do an append polymesh 3d star hold down shift bent arrow shoot it to the top I'm going to turn everything else back on so you can see what I'm doing I'm going to do turn on transparent and then I'm going to scale this down and just kind of bury it in his body this will be useful for putting on any IMM stuff we may need to do insert mesh brush uh, but also it'll be a name catcher. So when I go in here and say save, it's kind of a null node. We'll just put this in here. Salacious 01. And then you'll see this will inherit the name. So there's that. So uh, let's get back here. Um, we can also do, we can load up a reference and then get a little bit closer to the head. I think this will be okay. We can just kind of use our eyeballs. So go through here and be like, okay, there's where our head goes. Our mouth is coming along just fine let me see here uh, we got our ears here so speaking of IMM brushes right now this mesh doesn't have um, subdivision history so it's okay uh, let's do a sphere so B I brush insert IMM primitives hit so B for your brush to pop up and then I to narrow it down to any brush that starts with I, and then IMM primitive is this T. So if you can remember BIT, that'll always open up um, that. And then you can just go grab a sphere out of here. You can hit M as in Michael on your keyboard, and you can grab a sphere. So I'll drag it out, and then go ahead and say, again, we're in LSIM mode, so as it'll move scale and rotate on its local axis here, which is nice. Um, if it ever does anything weird, like what it's doing now, um, Let's see, I'm gonna turn this off. Geometry modified topology, mirror and weld across the x-axis. Uh, I'm gonna use my custom menu that just has a sphere in it, same deal. Pull this out. I'm gonna go ahead and say, you don't have to say split mass points, I just tend to work on things separately, but since the ears are attached, we'll go ahead and keep them. And so we're gonna thin this out with our scale, and then as I move scaling and rotating, it's working fine. Again, if it does get a little out of whack, geometry modified topology, mirror and weld should set it on the right track. So, uh, and again, LSIM with dynamic off will allow us to scale, move scale and rotate on that local axis there. So one more time, move, and then again, BSH might be a good, oh, 
but this has masking. Okay, it, it allows us to use masking, just not any brush masking. And by that, I mean underneath brush, auto masking, any of this stuff turned on, like topological, I don't think, or back face, certainly, I don't think it'll work. Um, Sculptors Pro will not work, but you can hide pieces of your mesh and use Sculptors Pro. It's very useful for that. So again, we'll just kind of go through here. We'll hold down Shift to Smooth. There we go. So we've basic, basically got our ear going. Now, this is all masked off. If I hold down Control and drag, um, it should, oh, Dynamesh got turned off. It should Dynamesh together. But like I said, if I want to work on these separately, um, I can just go through here. While it's still masked, I can do a split mass points or split unmasked points, your choice. And that'll split them into their own subtool. Okay, so we've got this, and boy, I'm running out of real estate. I do want to do kind of a close-up face version, just so I can see the wrinkles a little bit better. All right, let's do this one more time, sorry. <laughs> You're going way over here. You're going a little further over here. I'm going to bring one more image in here. Texture import. Let's see if I can't get a head straight on. Perfect. Here, and we'll grab this. Oops, texture, select it, add it to my spotlight. We'll put this over here, and we can move it behind as well. But eh, that'll work right about here. So we can see the head a little bit better. So, one more time, this is where this body is semi lined up. So, movie timeline show. And I'm not going to bother saving these anymore, but you. you and finally for just the head work that we're doing get a little bit more details heads are the kind of the funnest to start on oops watch where your cursor is going so you don't accidentally grab the timeline there there we go good enough and then we'll put that here okay so we'll turn off polyframe here and we'll turn off sculptors pro so we have the basic shapes of what we're going for and i should move this out of the way All right, now we're ready to just start rocking and rolling. And we'll also work from the side view here. Again, super ugly baby phase. We need a little bit more space for the cranium here. So I'm gonna go into my move brush here. And then this is probably gonna come out. Little, like I said, little cranium here. Let's give a little bit more um, personality to the ears here. Uh, we'll have it kind of come back and then back around. Seems like, it seems like it kind of cups forward. We're gonna say you come forward a little bit and then you get moved back. And while we're moving in these views, of course you can always snap it back and then readjust to make sure that you know everything should be generally where it should go. And then you're good to go. So here. And in fact, he's kind of a, you know, looking from this view here, kind of a really relaxed hunch view. Uh, of course, if we're gonna do a neutral pose, we'll straighten him out just a little bit. So he's gonna look a little bit weird, um, but that's okay. Also, one thing that's kind of bothering me is right now his neck goes all the way down here, but then that's not kind of really represented in his torso. So we'll go ahead and take this purple one out. Uh, just control shift tap and we'll say split hidden. We'll go just run a geometry modified topology, close holes, geometry modified topology, mirror and weld. Um, in fact, we could even say, you know what, you're deleted out of here because I'm going to go to my head here, go back to my menu, grab a cylinder, and we'll just make, oh no, <sighs> all right, we'll let ZBrush crash, and then we'll come back. Um, let me see here, okay, pull this back up. Um, Dynamesh resolution on my dev skin. I'm not sure why that was turned on as a default. I guess because a lot of people when they're using Z spheres, I don't know, maybe they ran the numbers and most people who are going in there using Z spheres. Um, let me go ahead and just pull this all the way over to the right and recovered Z tool. So let's load that back up. <laughs> well, that's not super helpful, is it? Uh, recovered Z tool. No, Z project. Is this the last one? Let's 
Jeez, these are all those demos from my class. Um, I know we did a quick save. Am I crazy? Oh, these are all recovered. Oh, there we go. Quick save, quick save, quick save. Recovered, 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 recovered. Okay, nothing useful in there. I need to clean this out. Um, all right, we'll go back to our quick save. Save off and everybody. Uh, and then, <laughs> uh, of course, just during a demo is when this happens. That's the fun part. Okay, cancel out of there. Texture, spotlight, load spotlight here. So this worked, cool. Z, we'll turn down the opacity, scoot over, scoot over, texture import, all right, move down. And in fact, we could even change the order of this. I think it's over here is to put it behind, yeah, cool. So we'll, uh, I'm not going to worry too much about the ears. Okay, so we've got that positioned one more time, and then we'll go ahead and save this. Save as you go. So we've got the body here. Yep, oh, there's my timeline. And here, and we were putting in a neck. So let's go ahead and get that head working again. So one more time. <sighs> B, S, H. Skip this note till next start. Snake hook. Brush samples off. There we go. Smooth. Now I'm afraid to use IMM brushes. Uh, this is the tuft of his hair. And this is, we'll go in here with uh, our Damien Standard brush and we'll just kind of cut in that mouth line here. And that'll give me an idea of where that stuff is. And then one more time. Uh, also, while we're thinking about it, I'm going to go ahead and just grab this out of here and say delete hidden. If we don't want to use an IMM brush, I mean, it shouldn't be that scary, but we'll go ahead and say add a cylinder this way, just append a cylinder. It'll automatically make a primitive into a polymesh 3D, so you don't have to hit that or initialize it, and we'll just scale this down. So that'll be our neck. Now, again, just kind of keeping in line with like, you know, you've got the head. Let me think about this. Yeah head forward and then kind of tilts back to a neck that's like this just to get it more of a little bit of a natural S curve to his little body. I think it'll be fine. And we'll say close holes, you know, which modified topology mirror and well, just in case. And in fact, let's go ahead and just dynamesh this. Yeah, at a fairly low resolution, I think is fine. Control W, we don't need all those poly groups. Shift to smooth, there we go. And then we've got the arms and then we've got the head. So let's go ahead and really quickly just say the beak area. You can also go into your move brush and underneath curve, there is an accu curve you can turn on and that'll allow you to pull out to a point instead of to a kind of a rounded edge. So that might come in handy in some of your travels or not. So we got our move brush here, neck, not really much of a chin to speak of. Again, hit control W, make it all one poly group if you want. And then now that we have the overall shape of the face, we're comfortable enough to say, okay, this is where I want the head reference to go. And then we'll just put in another dot, show, movie, timeline, save, save over. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna back it up now. Texture, save spotlight, yes. And as we're working, quick save. <gasps> Uh, how do you test light with the standard? Uh, that's just, you, you know, with the standard brush, as long as you don't have, like we were talking about before, auto masking, um, like if you have back face masking with your standard brush, it's not gonna work. Uh, you'll see it won't work, but if you don't have back face masking on, it should just turn on Sculptors Pro and it should work. But again, let me make sure I'm not lying to you. Yeah, as soon as I turn on back face masking, you'll see it, it turns that off. So, but yeah, it should just work. Okay, so this off. Now, uh, for the eyeballs, to keep us honest, let's go in here to my custom menu here, and we'll just grab a sphere, and we'll just pull this out, and we'll say split mass points. See how I was nervous to use IMMs, and now it's working fine. So don't be nervous. Things happen. So now we're going to go through here, and we're going to scale this up. Again, you can turn on LSIM while you're working, so you're working on that local axis there. There's generally where the eye should be. That'll keep us, like I said, I'll keep us honest when we're going through here and saying, okay, 
Um, he's going to have quite the serious brow ridge here. Let's go ahead and Dynamesh resolution this up just a tad. And then now, just working on our primary form, I'm going to tap L to turn off L sim for now. I don't need real smooth brush strokes. So, again, there's our brow here. And then we're going to go into our Damien standard brush. We'll kind of carve in a little bit, hold down Alt to carve out. So we're just going to go back and forth. Here's where the little eye bags are. And then he's got kind of little, little weird cheekbones. And then here's his mouth again. And that's going to come here. And I'm just kind of trying to find where my best reference is for this. OK, so he's got that curved beak. So we'll go ahead and pull this out. And then it goes back up into his mouth. Um, I guess this might be a good enough place for like Sculptors Pro just to kind of go in and build uh, a mouth bag. You can also use Boolean. So you can kind of go through here and kind of just push this in and then control drag if you want to redyne the mesh. Let's crank that resolution up just a tiny bit more. And then actually, let's see, standard. Okay, good. Now, uh, here's our neck. I'm going to kind of uh, push this forward and again, just put a little bit of relaxation into his pose there. Uh, X symmetry, of course, should be on for all this. I don't know why it wouldn't be on the neck. Okay, oh yeah, because we appended it. So now, oh yeah, mouth bag. So turn this off. I'm going to do, get scared one more time. I'm going to do another quick save. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, punch out the interior of the mouth. So when I go and open his mouth, there's a little cavity in there for his tongue and no teeth, it doesn't look like. Uh, so we'll use, oh man. It is really not digging IMM brushes today. Did my custom menu IMM brushes? I don't know why that would be being crazy. Um, okay, maybe I'll just use the native IMM brush. Ugh. Sure, sure, sure. Let me guess. You didn't. Okay. And then one thing. The only I need to open one thing now. Load my spotlight up, and then we're good to go. There we go. Oh, one more thing I need to do is pull this down. Okay, we've gotten nowhere. That's okay. We'll speed right along. So, uh, okay, mouth bag. Uh, BI brush insert. We'll only use this one from now on. M sphere until I can figure out what the heck's going on. So we're going to take this in here. I want to do a quick split mass points to split this into its own subtool. So I can, again, use a Boolean to kind of Boolean this out here. So we're going to stretch this here and we're going to hold down Alt and just move this around. So that, again, Geometry Modified Topology, Mirror and Weld, X Symmetry turned on. So now as I'm kind of, again, creating this mouth cavity, we want to see it digging into the geometry. So if I go into Subtool here, it's above the head right now. I'm going to move it down below. In fact, I'm going to turn everything else off except for the head and this mouth bag we're working on. Go here to Subtractive uh, Boolean, turn on Live Boolean, and now we can see as I'm moving the sphere around, it's going through and cutting into the mouth. So here, we'll give ourselves a little cavity here. Yeah, that's about right. Go ahead and pull this in a little bit, pull this out a little bit. Yeah, so if we like what we're seeing, one thing we can do is we can go down here to Subtool Boolean just make a Boolean mesh that'll put a U mesh out here that you can append back in. Since this is already a Dyna mesh, if I just merge this down, I'll turn on my polyframe so you can see it. Um, so here it's a green poly group here. If I merge this down, here's my hotkey key for merge down. That's under subtool merge, obviously. Um, it'll turn this subtool white, and then when you control drag, it'll make it a subtractive Dyna mesh subtool. So you can just continue Dyna meshing without having to go through and doing Boolean stuff. So we'll go ahead and smooth this out there. All right. Okay, now I'm back where I uh, where I can start again. Okay, cool. It showed me how to make a four-sided diamond primitive in ZBrush fast. A uh, four-sided a diamond, like a um, initialize Q cube, and then like uh, rotate it. Um, Trying to think of, I guess you can collapse these. Um, oh, I guess I can just use my 
So this would be like a collapse edge with X symmetry turned on. Might need a, I might need a, a visual of what exactly, what type of, like a faceted cut diamond. Um, something like that maybe. I don't know, there might be a faster way to do that, but. Uh, use bevel brush to give bevel a circular edge and then we can copy a curve. Can we use bevel brush? So bevel brush is BB, bevel arc and bevel flat. Uh, to a circular edge and then we can copy a curve. No, not that I know of. This only works on flat surfaces. Um, cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. Is my, I'm assuming, move my head. I guess I'll, while I'm down, hunker down here, you can see my forehead. That's real nice. Uh, let me see. Maybe down just a tiny bit more. Okay. Uh, my my default sitting pose is also very similar to Salacious Crumb's sitting pose. I'm just kind of a little blobby, uh, chubby reptile monkey animal. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Thanks, John. John, you. Okay, so let's go ahead and snap it back here. And again, let's hold down. Sh we don't need to hold down shift. So here's our eyeballs. W. If you want to move the eyeballs, Alt tap them, and then you can just select those sub tools. And then now we're just sculpting. So. Uh, move this in and go through here. Now, if I do want to use a standard brush, sometimes we were talking about turning on back face masking uh, so that Sculptors Pro will work. If you're not using Sculptors Pro uh, and you are going through here and sculpting and then you control drag to redyna mesh, sometimes you'll get those really, that really thin, let me just show you real quick. So if I go in here and like my clay tubes brush, really big offender. Go through here and then control drag you'll get this it's because it's pulling in from the other side because the brush is thicker than the mesh you're working on so that might be a really good use case to go in here to your standard brush and say ah brush auto masking turn on back face masking you'll see in my my custom interface here even if i don't have this menu open i can see that it's on so i can just kind of keep tabs on what has back back, back face masking and what doesn't and i have a hotkey for it so alt f while i'm in any brush will toggle that on and off oh okay so we have a beak here. Um, looks like we need a we need a transition down to the neck right now. It's just kind of a weird transition. So I'm gonna go in here with my clay brush, and we're just gonna kind of sculpt this out a little bit. And in fact, we can go ahead and oh, make sure you have back face masking on. So we'll go ahead and just make sure that that can go into the neck, and we can even just merge this down. Oops, wrong subtool. Pop this back out. There we go. Merge this down onto the neck, and now they're all stuck together. So, uh, also one thing we might want to do is it looks like his beak area is like a slightly different material, so I might just go ahead and cut that out while we're thinking about it. So let's go back to our reference here. I'm going to go into my standard brush or BPA for our paintbrush, have RGB, it's gonna turn RGB on, Z add off basically. We can literally go through here and paint because when we crashed, it turned back on our spotlight projection. So turn that back on and now we can literally paint where our features are. So here's where everything needs to go on my mesh. And then when I turn this off, hey, we can see this. Now you can go in here to render fade opacity and use that to kind of see your brush strokes a little bit better. Uh, while I'm just kind of messing around, I'll go in here, turn my RGB intensity down quite a bit, and then just say color fill object a couple times. Incidentally, in 2023, I think, uh, that is, you can also do that underneath here, poly paint fill color, uh, so that you can utilize this new apply last actions, which will only work with tool operations as of this recording. So clay brush will turn RGB off so we don't um, have that turned on and then now we've got a little area for our eyes a little area for our eye bags looks like this kind of comes forward a little bit so I'm gonna say go into our clay brush here clay brush clay build up standard brush move brush that's essentially what we're gonna be using the most I believe so yeah again the eyeballs kind of just kind of sit in this little in this little area here just holding down alt so there's where the eyeballs are, and then we've got our furrowed brow ridge, and we'll use like the inflate brush and the standard brush. And then the beak we were talking about here, 
Um, looks like, yeah, it starts pretty close to the head. So we're going to go through here and just start, you know, a little more resolution. I'm just constantly squeaking resolution out of this. So here's the, the beak, and it's going to go about here. Yeah, kind of follow our polypane here. So if we want to go ahead and pop this off into its own subtool, in effect, we'll just kind of cut straight across. We, we could we could cut it anywhere. We can go up here. We can go back here if we want to, but I guess I don't see a whole lot of information on the underside of the mouth. So we'll use our we'll use an educated guess, and maybe maybe we'll pull towards the front just a tad. There we go. So here's the beak area. If we want to make this into its own mesh because it's a different material, and we want to like work the skin around it, which as you can see, you know, it kind of bumps up around it. It kind of looks like a little bit of a nose too, or maybe it was just in the original puppet, just a wrinkle that happened, but maybe it's a nose. We'll go with that. So we'll go ahead and say control. Uh, actually, this might even be easier. Control shift, go grab select lasso. I'm just gonna use visibility to kind of grab that piece. Uh, control shift drag to invert that. If you missed anything, you can just control shift alt and grab it if you need it, but I think we're in good shape. So again, subtool split hidden. We'll split it into its own subtool. I'm gonna turn off, hold on shift and turn off everything except for what we're working on as far as the, move this up, there we go. The head area. Okay, more clay brush here. So we've already got, oops, I'll tap the head here. So we've got these kind of little lumps that go around and they're kind of scaly. We can add those scales pretty easily. And then on the beak here, I don't need poly paint on this. I wanna see that I have it unselected here. And then same thing for the bottom. This one seems to go out a little bit wider. So if we go in here to our Damien Standard brush, this is kind of where that beak goes, like so. And then it kind of goes narrow. So we'll say you are the beak portion of the bottom here. And again, we'll just kind of not lop that off. Yoink, control shift drag here, and then we'll just say control shift alt. This is just a visibility selection. So we're just basically passing geometry back and forth between visible and non-visible states. And then we can just say split. And then again, we'll turn off that. All right, and then you can just control drag to read Dynamesh and it will close the holes for us. Um, or if you want to, geometry modified topology, close holes, W, control tap that. I like to put, hold down control and just put in a little edge ring there. Just give a little bit of breathing room. Um, if you don't do that, sometimes you'll get these little frayed edges. You can chew those away by holding down shift with Sculptors Pro on and you can just kind of chew those nasty edges back if you want to, just to make those surfaces a little bit nicer. And then control drag to read Dynamesh. All right, and then one last thing on the head, control drag. Now make sure you have uh, your poly paint on if you want to keep it. If you control drag to read Dynamesh and turn your poly paint back on, it'll disappear. So make sure your poly paint is on and then control drag, it'll keep it. Uh, yeah, okay. Back over here. Uh, thank you, John. Um, let's first set a diamond. I think I did that. Uh, how in how to use Dynamesh Zero Mesh and Dynamic in the right way to sculpt a model. Um, Dynamesh, Zero Mesh, so ba long, I mean, we'll do a little bit of that in this live stream. Uh, essentially, as soon as I'm done doing any major changes to this with Dynamesh, I'll go through and do a Zero Mesh pass just to make it uh, a little bit more of a predictable mesh. You know, right now we're just sculpting with a bunch of triangles, which is totally fine. We're just doing a block out of the head, right? Um, but, you know, when we want to go through and start doing the fine details and wrinkles and stuff, uh, we want, it's, it's, it's quad geometry is a little bit more predictable when it's subdividing and smoothing and the brushes interact with those, with that geometry a little bit nicer. So, I mean, we're actually kind of close to where we could do that because we have a natural seam line right around his neck where there's a fur collar. So if we're so inclined, we could zero mesh this right now. I'm not quite ready yet, because I think the reason why I say hold off just a bit is because if you're going to do anything major, like, you know, BSH, and then, you know, really change the silhouette, obviously we're going to start taxing the geometry and we want to keep continue to DynaMesh. Once you're done doing that, uh, yeah, feel free definitely to um, go through zero mesh and then... Um, Give yourself nice geometry to subdivide and have subdivide history because that's really useful. Um, 
Dynamic immersion. Dynamic is something that if you're doing hard surface stuff like this, so I've got eyeballs here. Um, you know what, we could do maybe a little bit more, not that it would be all that useful in this case. This would be placeholder, so if I hit D for dynamic, that's gonna turn on geometry, dynamic subdiv. So Shift D turns it off, D turns it back on. So if I wanna go through here with like my Z modeler brush and just say, you know, pull out, um, this geo here so we can say okay let me grab all this geo i'm just kind of painting or we can just paint this there we go control shift tap let's we'll do an auto groups geometry modified topology mirror and well so we grab both of these control w this gives it its own this gives it its own poly group incidentally with select lasso you can select edge rings which is a feature this one will only select poly groups so if you ever run into that issue that's why uh, so we can take this one here and then say delete hidden and then we can say uh, if we do a close convex hole now we'll get that nice lens um, that'll, so we can actually take this say control W make its own poly group crease PG under your geometry crease menu hit D for dynamic and now you're kind of hard surface modeling um, and then you could duplicate this off and do the opposite so if you want to kind of go inwards what you'd have to do is go down here to display properties flip um, oops morph target delete morph target flip maybe that's why it was crashy there's a morph target z spheres store a morph target sometimes and it's maybe that's what was causing problems so close convex hole so if i click and pull in here now it'll go the opposite direction so same deal we can just flip this back and then w make that more obvious there we go crease pg d for dynamic and if i'm using dynamic and I'm doing hard surface modeling just as a dynamic preview. Um, I'm not going to dynamesh, you know, I'm just box modeling. So I'll say like, okay, crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three, just to kind of get a nice fall off. And that'll be how I work with dynamic. Um, I wouldn't use dynamic with uh, dynamesh just because dynamesh meshes are fairly high. In fact, let me just do it real quick. So this mesh right here, it's a block out and it's not that high. It's 98,000, which for ZBrush is nothing. However, if I hit D for dynamic on this thing, you'll, you'll see if I do shift D and then turn D back on, it'll smooth it out. But then when you go to sculpt on this, it's gonna behave like this, really laggy. Um, so whenever, if you're ever sculpting in ZBrush, you're like, why is it lagging so much? Just make sure you didn't go in here and accidentally hit D to turn dynamic on. So what it's doing is giving you a smooth preview. It's subdividing your geometry twice, so 98,000, subdivided twice, however many polygons that is, and then when you're sculpting on it, it's giving you a smooth preview while you sculpt. So it'll allow you to do it, but it's obviously not gonna be super performant. Um, cool. Excellent. Um, let me see, so solo mode here. Okay, so we got this, we got that. Uh, let's go through here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab our inflate brush. He's got some really chubby cheeks here, so just kind of inflate along here. Uh, like his mouth is really chubby and then it kind of goes into a, you know, this kind of goes down and kind of swings across here and then this kind of pops out a little bit. So whatever you need to do, I mean, obviously you want to start macro to micro. So get your major volumes and forms in first and then everything else will fall into place as you go through and start to detail it out. So and then hold down shift to smooth. We'll go ahead and I just want to open this mouth up just a little bit more down to the corners here. This is another good example too of if I want to continue dynameshing, it's going to stick those corners of the mouth together. This would be another reason to zero mesh and then start sculpting when I start to go to final, uh, just to make sure that I can have those overlapping fleshy bits without dynamesh forcing me to stick them together. Uh, Sculptors Pro won't have you stick things together. Um, but uh, I'm not using Sculptors Pro all that much uh, at the moment, so I can't just rely on that. Okay, I think we've got that mostly blocked out. I'm gonna go in here to the neck, and we're gonna say Control Mask Lasso. I'm gonna grab just the neck here, Control Tap to blur it out. In fact, if you just back your camera off with Select Lasso, that'll give you a very nice smooth fall off, and then we'll go through here. Oh, I could use Proxy Pose too, I forgot about that. That's another awesome addition I've been using quite a bit. So we'll go ahead and say, yeah, that matches. And then control drag, control drag again. Now, the neck is interesting. Let's go in here. Awesome, thank you. Um, put this over here. 
uh, it's kind of, it almost looks like paper mache uh, like memory wrinkles on here. I'm assuming that's some sort of vascular system. But uh, so back here on the neck here, we don't even need that poly paint anymore or the mask. Let's hold down shift and turn that off. So now we're just doing the neck tube. Mirror and weld, we're just keeping everything mirrored. Here, does this need to pop out more? And this might be part of the issue of, you know, having multiple subtools, you are gonna have to move things separately. Um, it's not a huge deal, but just something to keep in mind. And why do I keep losing symmetry? I keep turning it off for some reason. Okay, sorry if my keyboard's loud. Okay, we got the cranium here. And again, I'm trying I'm trying to speed through the ugly baby phase just because it's uncomfortable uh, sitting in there, but boy, that's just part of the process. Also, uh, if you do have poly paint turned on, you hold down shift, you'll see it's smoothing the poly paint as well. If you wanna not do that, hold down shift, turn off RGB, and now you'll just smooth geometry, not your poly paint. Of course, the inverse is also true. Okay, so kind of a hanging lump, or uh, kind of a ribbed neck. So we'll go ahead and say, okay, great. And then, uh, you know what, let's hop back in here and we'll hit Z and we'll turn this up a little bit. So yeah, something around this area. I guess we can just kind of match. Here we go. And again, as you can see, it was sculpting through, but again, we're just kind of this and then standard brush. Yeah, we're just gonna get just just a just a little taste. Just kind of getting what, what would we call that? Um, something vaguely representative of what it'll end up being. It doesn't have to be final. Just trying to get a feel for how everything's gonna work and making sure it looks okay. I'm gonna make this here. And we're gonna keep pushing this over here. Give my face a little bit more room. All right, and then we'll also go into fiber mesh. That'll be fun. We'll do a little bit of fiber mesh and or hair cards in ZBrush. Okay, so if I turn everything else back on, again, BI brush insert IMM primitives, quick save, beep. And then uh, right here for the ear, we'll recreate these. So I'm, gonna do, I'm just gonna do a split mass points real quick. And then now when I'm using my arrow keys, it'll actually cycle through these. I'm gonna go back to my standard brush so I can use my arrow keys to snap here. You know, we'll go to this one here. And again, turn on local sim with dynamic off and we'll go ahead and scale this out and up like so. And then use our uh, move brush or move accu or snake hook, whatever you prefer. And we'll match this. Shift to smooth, and of course, if you like working in Dynamesh, go for it. Uh, and we'll go ahead and put that arc back in here. Now, I, if I try to put an arc in here now, let's try it. Let's go in here to bend arc. It will, yeah, it'll allow me to do it across symmetry. That's interesting. Uh, let's see if it'll allow us to do bend curve. Yeah, okay, so bend curve is a cool one. So here's where our gizmo was going through, that was, if I hit W, there's our gizmo direction. That's gonna determine when I go in here and say, hey, give me a bend arc, which direction, or bend curve also, which direction my uh, bounding box is going essentially. So if I wanna go through here and like curve this forward and then pull this back a little bit, this will allow me to kind of push those into place and kind of get that going. So from the side here, yeah, it looks about right. So we'll hit W and we'll scoosh this back a little bit here. Again, just a little bit of movement in here. And then we'll go in here and inflate. And yeah, something like that. Now again, we're really taxing this geometry. If you want to, you could say, hey, you know what, zero mesh half, depth size down to zero. That's under your geometry zero mesh here. And then, hey, you're good to go. And you can just keep sculpting on nice quads and not even use Dynamesh at all. Uh, up to you. Because again, we're not really, at this point, we're not really taxing the geometry that much to kind of finagle it into place. So you could just start subdividing. Oops, let's hold down shift, turn down our Z intensity a bit. A lot. There we go. Since we're working on very low res mesh. There we go. So, uh, like I said, we can just, instead of 
you know, using Dynamex, we can just hit Control D to subdivide. It kind of averages your vertices, and then since this is so low, sometimes I like to go in here to turn off the smooth modifier and then divide that once, and then turn it back on and divide it again. Now this hold the volumes uh, just a slight bit better. So again, we'll go in here in our standard brush. We'll put that nice roll that's at the top of the ear there. And this kind of gets thinned out a little bit, so I'm just gonna hold down Shift. Now these really thin meshes, um, just gotta be careful again. Back face masking is your friend. If you're using your your build up, your clay build up and stuff, yeah, that's not ideal. That's okay. We'll, we'll fix all this after we merge everything together. Uh, although in this instance, we don't necessarily have to merge these down. We could literally just go in here and say, "Hey, I'm gonna put in just a natural seam line of a, just a big old fleshy wrinkle or something to get those to kind of sit together a little bit nicer." Um, I don't know, we'll play it by ear. So back here, uh, and in fact, if we do want to fix this, we talked about free subdivisions last time. If we go in here and if we have subdivision levels, we can say free subdivs, and I can go through here and say, okay, this is not working. So we'll say uh, collapse edge, collapse edge here, just to kind of get rid of that weird long triangle that was in there. Um, get bridge. This is all with the Z modeler brush, bridge two points. Want to make that a little bit more what we want, and then when we're done, we'll unfreeze our subdivision levels. And um, <laughs> ZBrush just wants to make me look foolish today. Uh, that should work. Ah, we're in a weird state now. Anyway, let's go back to questions. And you use dynamic cloth for creating neck. Is it possible to use gravity and dynamic to create such wrinkles? Absolutely. Good. Good call, let's do that. Um, if I can get my ZBrush back. I guess we'll wait. Um, hey, greetings from Ukraine. Uh, really important question for me. I can make a really strong base with some vectors. For example, you do the same in 3D Max, just import DXF for this. Uh, from vector, so like, uh, like, a, like an SVG file, you can use the text importer if I'm understanding correctly. Wow, okay. Well, hold on. I'll show you that in just a second. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go through and delete all the morph targets that this that the I have I just have a sneaking suspicion that's what's causing that. And it's also putting us in a really bad state that it's not saving our quick saves. Um, <laughs> making this really painful to work on. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go in here to our subtool at to the very top, and we're gonna go down here to morph target. We're gonna say delete, and we're gonna use our down arrow key to go through every subtool and delete the morph target that Z Spheres put on there. I'm gonna have to guess that might be get rid of our gremlin here. Uh, let's also go in here and say, we'll call this Salacious O2. I'm just tired of remaking the same damn stuff. Uh, okay, so uh, vectors. So if we go in here, uh, Z plugin. Text 3D and vector shapes. Just go in here and say load. Um, that's a ZTX. That's not it. Uh, new SVG. So if you go new SVG, you can bring in an SVG file and then it'll treat it like a, a shape that'll go through and cut through and, you know, just create the basic shape that you need to. Oh, in fact, now that I mentioned that, if we go through here and say. SVG. <sighs> Boy, everything is really trying my patience this morning. Um, <laughs> text. There it goes. Jeez. SVG. SVG vector mesh. I don't know why, if it's my internet or because I'm streaming, I have gigabit. It's not like it's been a problem previously, but I am just having a hard time today. There you go. Check this one out. It's never gonna load because I am having the worst morning, but there, there we go. So here is text, and then here is bringing in wingdings, and then here's bringing in shapes. So just kind of bringing in a SVG file, and then it'll make the shape for me. And then you can do all sorts of things to it after that. Um, uh, how can I increase the poly limit in Dynamesh? Nothing happens no matter how much I increase the resolution. You may have to go into uh, Z plugin. There's a, oh, where is it? 
I thought there was a there's a decimation master. I thought there was a dynamesh utility. I think there is. If you go to ZBrush's website, there's a dynamesh utility, and that will use scale to give you more uh, dynamesh resolution. Um, that might be the best bet. Uh, mesh extrude and mesh project is a rule when I try to make it non smooth. I have a smooth flat. Okay. How can we make a mesh, make it with mesh extrude and mesh project? This rule when I try to make it non-smooth I have flat shape but as a rule I need to make it nice strong edges for example shields mesh extrude and mesh project um not sure I follow but if I go in here and I want to make a shield for example and say split mass points and we'll just kind of flatten this out and scale it up here and uh, lengthen it out and then I want to say, again, we'll go back here to control shift, select lasso. I'm just going to do a quick auto groups here. And we'll just grab these two, control W, delete hidden, zero mesh half, depth size down to zero. Um, and then we want to do a mesh extrude. So extrude, polygroup all, we'll extrude this back. And then visibility, display properties, flip. Um, Mess extrude. Mess project, I don't know that I would use. Flat shape with strong edges. So then you can go in here and say crease PG, decrease your polygroups. You can hit D for dynamic in this case. And now you have smooth shape with strong edges. And then you can just continue box modeling. So we can say, okay, uh, extrude polygroup all, extrude polygroup all. Again, hit crease PG again. And then D. Crease PG is put, putting creases along your polygroups. So. That would be a kind of a box model way to do it. Um, uh, brush name. So brush mesh. Oh, these things? Um, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, <laughs> okay, let me reset my brain here. So we have mesh extruded, mesh project. When I make it non-smooth, I have a smooth flesh shape as a run. I need a strong edges, for example, shields. Um, ooh, that I'm not, I, you can play, I don't know that I would go about making a shields with mesh extract and extrude. Um, I can show you where, let me see, created playlists. Uh, what am I looking for? That was a ZBrush 2020, 20, was that 2021 here? Um, I'm trying to remember like mesh splat. That might have been 2019 actually. Or 2020. Mesh splat, mesh extrude. Gosh, I don't really remember. Okay, you know what? Let's just find it. 2021, okay. 2021.6, uh, so it was towards the bottom. And this monster playlist, because 2021 was a monster release, way down here, uh, there it is. So, extrude pro, uh, mesh balloon, mesh extrude, mesh project. It starts at video 74 in here. That will have all the information I have in my brain in regards to how those things work. Um, but again, I don't know that I would necessarily use a sh make a shield with those, but hey, you might, you might be onto some. Um, so uh, one more time, oh my God, one more time, I'm going to make these down. Yeah, for the third time, let's make these ears. <sighs> Texture, load spotlight, reference, okay. Uh, movie, timeline, load, okay. Z, get rid of this, okay. Uh, standard brush. It might be the problem is ZBrush really just does not want me to make these ears. It's like, Mike, this is not going to work for us. Think of something else to make besides these salacious crumb ears. All right, so we've got these in place. Uh, again, if we want to zero mesh, we'll do zero mesh same just to kind of get even quads all through here. We can say shift to smooth, move. Uh, like we talked about before, go in here and say, you know, set your gizmo and then say bend curve and then add ourselves a little resolution just a little resolution so um 
move forward, back, back further, and then forward. There we go. That'll work. Q, W, and then we can just start uh, subdividing up. Standard brush, quick save. And uh, now we finally got ears quick saved. So we'll go through here really quickly and turn off L Sim, turn on clay brush. We'll go through here and just kind of flatten this out a little bit. You can use trim dynamic, you can use H polish. Again, just remember to turn on back face masking if you don't want to pull through your mesh there. All right, time to work on something else. Oh yeah, we were gonna talk about the neck here. So, I, you know what? I guess we're far enough along. Hmm. Let's just, let's just do it. So I'm gonna take my head and put it above my ears here. We're gonna raise the resolution just a tiny bit. Uh, merge down, control drag to Dynamesh this result. So now we have all of this Dynamesh together. We've got the head and the ears. Our basic volumes are here. We're not gonna be making any major changes to the mesh, but I do want to, like we were talking about in the chat, uh, use cloth. And we also don't want our mouth to be pinched that close. We want it to actually be over here. So in order to have the ability to sculpt and have, uh, what's it called? Uh, subdivision history. And not have things stick together with Dynamesh. We're going to go ahead and just zero mesh this. And if I go through here now and say, okay, I'm going to go in and uh, B, C, K for my cloth hook brush and start using cloth hooks. See how the wrinkles are really fine? That's okay. Um, we can go in here to like say dynamics and say firmness and crank that up and we'll get larger wrinkles. Uh, but there's, there's noise in there, so I'll show you a better way. So we'll turn this back down to two. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna store these points in history. So these are our high res points, quote unquote. And again, we're not doing anything crazy with our silhouette, so I think it's pretty safe to go ahead and do this now. So we're gonna say control tap the latest point in history. Uh, if you're having a hard time seeing it, you can go in here to edit, delete older undo history, it'll get rid of all of that and then you got just one piece here. So control tap that to store your history and then we're gonna zero mesh this. Um, it might behoove us to give ourselves a few poly loops because actually now that I think about it, I do want um, a little more information around these eyeballs. So really quickly, I'm gonna go through here and we're going to punch up just some flesh around the eyeball there. And then we'll embed it just a bit, but I do want polygroups to kind of be there. Um, so again, you can Dynamesh this as you're working, but we're gonna go through here and so we're gonna turn on polyframe, hit Control W, make it all in polygroup, and then I'm gonna go through and we're just gonna use masking and then in here, I'm gonna say, you can hit Control W. Uh, it'll just leave you the really alias lines. I'm gonna try to do a geometry edge loop, edge loop mass border. You can see it there. And then we'll just slide, that'll give us a slightly nicer slice through there. I'm gonna hold down Control Shift and isolate this. And then one more time, we're just gonna use our masking to kind of to kind of go through and mask this area now. And we're basically just going to use masking to kind of put in poly loops. And we'll use that to our advantage when we go through and use our zero measure. So we'll say, uh, again, edge loop mask border. Uh, oh, it's hidden. You know what? Fine. That's fine. Control W. We'll fix, we'll fix the slicing issue in just a second. And then one more time, Control Shift, select this one here. And we'll do another concentric ring like here. Control W. And then I don't want any super tight corners, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna let that resolve itself. And then right around the beak here, we're gonna say you need to have your own polygroup here. So around the whole mouth, we'll do a concentric ring. And in fact, if you go down here, so see uh, how we have a ring of a mask. I'm gonna go down here to masking and we're going to say mask region, analyze region, give a little mask in there, say fill region, that'll go ahead and fill it for us, and then we can just say control W. So now, uh, we can also do this, control shift S to shrink, and that'll give us another edge ring, we'll hit control W on that one. So now we've got these concentric rings here, and then around the ear, we want another one here, 
So this one we can actually just use visibility. So we'll go through here and say, okay, you control W and then, uh, you know what, even on the ear, I think maybe having a front and back line might be useful. So I'm gonna kind of look down at the object and then get rid of the front half maybe if I can. Control W, Control W. Let's make that more obvious. All right, front, back, there, edge ring. And another thing you can do is you can hold down Control Shift and go in here to slice curve. And you can just say, hey, I want concentric rings all the way through here. It'll just keep them for you. All right, I think I'm good to go. <clears throat> so uh, we have X symmetry turned on. We want to go down here to uh, geometry, Ziri mesher, uh, keep groups, smooth groups down. Uh, you know what? I do want to smooth my groups out. You can go in here manually if you go, you can hit the comma key, go into brush, go into your smooth brushes, and there is a smooth brush. I'm going to hold down shift and just do it manually. Smooth brush modifiers, weighted smooth mode. I'm going to set it to groups border, which is six, and that will allow you to manually go through here and just smooth out the border between poly groups. You can also go down here to, oh, one more ring I want to put in here is at the very bottom. I'm going to hold down Control Shift and knife curve out the bottom. So that'll give me a nice poly group down at the bottom. Um, anyway, going here to masking, I don't want to lose my detail. Well, not a ton of details on the face to lose right now, but if I had them, I wouldn't want to lose them. So I'm going to go through here, mask by border, just turn off everything, oop, mask by group, sorry. And um, you know what, maybe even grow a little bit. Control tab to invert that. And now when I go through here, it'll just, uh, I'll do a deformation polish by features and just tap that a couple times. You could also turn it to open circle and tap that'll really smooth it out. So now we have very smooth polygroup borders. And that's important because Ziri Mesh will want to build in aliasing from your, from your borders if they do exist. So we don't want that. So X symmetry turned on, Ziri Mesher, I'll just say, uh, target polygon count of 30,000 or so, adaptive size down. If I turn it down to zero, any major edge changes, it's not going to build in any extra geometry. I don't know that I have any real major edge changes, so I'll keep it fairly low, and then we'll just hit zero measure. And that way, we'll have rings, edge rings, where we need them when we got to start going in through and, and through and doing like these really concentric eye bags and stuff. We just want our edge loops vaguely uh, where they should go. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is, uh, actually I didn't mention it. So here is where we stored our history, but then we ended up making a bunch of changes up to this point. So I'm just gonna go back to, at least smooth, smooth the hell out of those. You know what? I'm just gonna go back one, control tap those points in history. So now we have a lower res mesh. If you wanna tax it a little bit, maybe try maybe half and just see what result you get. I try to go as low as possible, really. Um, if you want to run a different midline algorithm, you can go in here to Geometry, Ziri Mesh, or hold down Alt in Ziri Mesh. That'll give you a different midline. Um, you can also do a retry, um, which I'm, I'm just making this low as a possible, so I don't need to retry, but I like that midline. Ziri Mesh half again. Eh, it's a little too low. Okay, I think this will work fine. And if I want to go through here and change any of this geometry, like this is getting a little troublesome in here, I can manually go through and do like, you know, bridge two points and then move this stuff around and see if I can't resolve this here. I could go through and slice this. So uh, this long triangle here, I can go through and you know what? I have a brush that's set to Z modeler slice. So I can just literally just click here and click here and then do a quick mirror and weld. And then we'll say increase all. We don't need any creases here. And then we can say delete edge. There we go. Something like that. Uh, any other areas that are iffy? And again, we can always change the geometry later. It's not a huge deal. Uh, oh, also this middle part here. Uh, it's not terrible, but if you did want to replace this, you could say, you know, grab, grab here, delete hidden, close convex hole and then just cap this off with whatever um, and in fact yeah that's fine uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it to the original 
So uh, we've stored those points in history. I'm gonna say project history to get our details back and then control D to subdivide and then project history. That's underneath your subtool project here. Uh, control D to subdivide and project history. Now the whole reason I did that is so that I could, number one, I could get my details back, but also get myself some new geometry, but also allow myself, so instead of 166,000 points, like we are talking about with the neck wrinkles here, if I go through B, C, K for my cloth hook brush and move it around again, very fine wrinkles. And in fact, if I hit Control D one more time, that puts us over the limit. Now we're at 600,000. Now it's gonna make me not be able to use dynamics because it's just too much. Now we can crank up the max simulation points or I can go through here and just do a visibility selection to lower the number of polygons visible and it'll still work. However, it's also, uh, if I wanna go through here, I can now have subdivision history. So I can go to subdivision level two and use the brush. And not only will it work just fine, but also I'll get bigger wrinkles. And if I go down to subdivision level one, bigger wrinkles. And that's a little bit better than going up here and turning that firmness up or down. You won't get that noise artifacting. Um, also, if it's wrinkling too much or it's moving your mesh around too much, remember you do have thick skin, uh, which is here tool thick skin you can turn that on and that'll limit this will give you a preview of how much or how little it's going to allow you to affect the surface so now we can go to your other cloth hook brush and use it like I'm pushing skin over a puppet underneath something like that um, so there's that and if these wrinkles are too big again just go up to decision level two and now you'll get finer wrinkles now you can dial in the firmness to get more or less wrinkles you can also go in here and you can say like mask lasso and then control tap to blur that edge out and control tap to invert that hit W. We'll go ahead and just put it here and we'll do BTC, which is transpose cloth. And you can use this to kind of move scale and rotate while you're simulating uh, to give you wrinkles in that direction too. So a lot of different ways. Oh, another way. Let's go back up to setting level three. So we're looking uh, let's go in here to my, I like my damn standard O2. You can Google that and get that on the internet. Uh, I'm going to go through here and just kind of use uh, damn standard O2 to kind of put in some, some neck wrinkles here about where they should be. And then if I want to go through here, so again, neck wrinkles here, it's kind of going up around the face. And then uh, we'll use our standard brush to kind of go through here and we're just kind of putting in wrinkles, right? Now, if I want to exaggerate these wrinkles, um, I can go in here to say any brush that I want. So like we're doing BCK with thick skin turned on, I can go through here and just kind of push this geometry around and it'll simulate wrinkles. You can also go into like, say, I like to use my pinch brush, then underneath brush elasticity, crank the simulation iterations up to 100, and that will tell the brush to use these dynamics to go through here and just use cloth simulation while you're using the brush to go through here and just continue to add neck wrinkles and such. Um, of course, you know, feel free to use that. Another cool thing too is now that I have subdivision history, I can now go through and like, you know, uh, let's say move brush, auto masking, and say topological will change that range down to like one. Now I can move the upper and lower lips independently. If I don't have that on, it's gonna move everything within the brush radius. Also, that is in your comma key too. Brush, move, it'll have that setting for you. I'm actually gonna go in here to shift and turn this back down to weighted smooth mode of one, which is smooth stronger. And then that's why I usually bring my Z intensity down. If I don't need those points stored in history anymore because I already have them projected to what I'm working on, I can just control tap, control tap again, and the latest. Um, okay, okay. Uh, yep, yep, we talked about wrinkles. Oh yeah, and then as far as the mouth goes, uh, now having the ability to say, go through and inflate this, and I'm not using Dynamesh anymore, make sure that's turned off. So I, I can control drag all I want, it's not gonna Dynamesh. And now I can get again, these overlapping uh, kind of fleshy areas here. And I can push these together and it's fine. I can always open them back up and rig those points to a joint and have it separate out. Um, okay, 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 okay. So let's go back in here. I'm gonna take this down just a tiny, tiny bit. Oops, X symmetry turned on. Quick save, or nine on your keyboard. And then push this down and then go back in here. And there we 
we go. Okay, so this skin kind of comes up over the face and then it has like a little nose thing that kind of comes in. So I'm gonna go to my Move Accu brush and then pull out just kind of a little nose area here. Um, and like we said before, we can bring this down. Let's go in here to our clay tubes and we'll just start bringing this down. Let's shift to smooth here. out just a bit now uh, these are interesting too because you know usually eyes go from like the inner and outer canthus and then that's the detachment points and then you kind of blink between those this is just perfectly round there's maybe a little indication I don't know it's it's kind of it's almost like he has very either just super round eyes or there's like a like a slight cat eye. So it kind of the outer canthus would be here and the inner canthus would be like in here where it attaches maybe to his skull. Um, whatever kind of reptile monkey skull he has. And again, if we need more resolution, we can just hit control D and now we have, uh, we can go and work on our primary forms and then bump up. Now I don't want to work on like poor detail or anything like that just yet, but as far as just kind of getting these looks here for this and then this looks like it kind of goes up a little bit there we go and then and also on our eyeballs we can hit D for dynamic kind of round those out a little bit more it's just a preview so we don't actually have to subdivide if we don't want and we're just going to put a little eye bag and then again we'll just pull here and then because we have real geometry in there that'll again keep us honest you probably want a little draft to the face you know like the eye eyelids are going around this eyeball and then they kind of squeeze together around the eyeball give it some thickness for our eyelid here so it can read appropriately uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off thick skin because that's I forgot I had it on and I don't need it on anymore Alrighty, and then uh, again, we'll go through here. So it kind of looks like this kind of kind of like kind of little eye bag thing, and then it kind of curves up into that first bit of reptile, whatever. And then one more down here. And this is going to be one of those things too where I probably go offline and kind of just refine. I'm just doing the, just because it can get super boring to kind of watch, honestly. And I wouldn't do that to you. Okay. We have the head blocked out. Sorry, I had to remake the ears three times. Let's move on to the body. Uh, kind of just like a little lumpy body guy, which is totally fine. Quick save. And we'll go ahead and... Actually, the back of the head doesn't look right right for my reference. Uh, dynamic, okay, so making sure that was off. So going through here, and you know what, before we head out, let's, we'll also do a little bit of, um, oh, topological's on, that's why it's like, why is this so laggy? So one thing to watch out for is topological turned on. Anything that's going to auto mask anything at a high resolution. And you can also drop down in your set of vision level. If we're just doing, you know, volume changes, there's no reason to have it at your highest. Dump that down. Okay. And then the body here. Uh, again, we'll just go ahead and really quickly just work on the rest of what needs to happen here. Uh, he is kind of like in a kind of a schlubby pose here. I am straightening him out just a tiny bit. Um, for his A pose, if I want to go through and rig and animate this thing, then I am I do want it fairly neutral, and then I can go and pose him into the schlubby pose, but I'm going to build in a little bit of it. So here, we've got a little body wrinkle, a little body wrinkle, and we'll kind of round him out. And then we'll have this 
does have a pretty severe, like a, what do you call it, like a dowager's hump kind of thing going on here, which is totally fine. And then his arms are, his arms are a little forward. We'll push those back just a tiny bit. They are, they are a little forward in the reference too, but uh, maybe a little extreme. All right, and then little booty, and then his legs. His legs might be a little long. I'm just gonna. Oh, we have blood. So uh, BTC is transpose cloth. BTR is regular transpose. I don't know what that really stands for, but we'll say that. There we go. And then again, anything where the two pieces have to kind of meet together. Uh, again, I can merge the legs into the body and the body into the neck. Uh, but there's also a, a natural seam line from what I'm seeing the reference to, so we can maybe lean into that. Uh, like I said before, I like to kind of work on the feet alone, so and feet and hands, so control shift Q, split hidden, legs, close holes. We'll just run a close holes real quick. Quick save. And then for the arms, um, these, I'm going to kind of play around with the proportions just a bit. And then again, the hands, control shift Q, split hidden, close holes, close holes, quick save. Now, the arm anatomy itself looks fairly humanoid. So we'll hit uh, control D and then, you know what? Tack with it. Let's just dynamesh it. No, smooth. So now on the arm, we look for our bony landmark. So we've got our little elbow here and then we need our little deltoids. We're going to go into our clay tubes, or in this case, we'll maybe just do an inflate. It's got pretty nice little delts, you know, little, little muscular monkey reptile arms. So uh, we'll go through here, give them some little delts here, and we'll just kind of sketch in what we need. I'm going to, I'm going to inflate just a tiny bit. His arms aren't that skinny, and then we can go through and sketch. We'll kind of whittle it down. Let's go ahead and raise the resolution just a bit. So. Deltoid here. Um, I don't know that he has a real like. Uh, we can we can <laughs> just to talk about it. We could dial it in, but uh, it's kind of like was that the manubrium from the sternum over here to a clavicle. Uh, I didn't really have much of traps, but you know what? When we're talking about just kind of dialing in anatomy, and he's vaguely human reptile-y, it's good to have landmarks that we're familiar with, just so the audience or whoever's looking at this can kind of tell like, oh, okay, I can, there, there's something going on here that I can understand. Not that we would need to necessarily go through here and like, you know, Bruce Lee him out or anything like that, or Eckersh him out, I don't think that's necessary, but just to kind of keep us within the realm of something grounded. And also this is where animal anatomy would come into play too, if you wanted to find out what salacious is uh, nearest earth relative would be go for it so now we have enough landmarks in the body I can feel like I can go through here it's okay it's gonna attach the clavicle ish there's some sort of maybe I mean in the reference he's just kind of a blob but uh, if we wanted to continue that thought you know here would be like the C7 ish and then uh, so here's the chromium process so scapula or I'm sorry clavicle Chromium process, spine of the scapula, uh, teres major, teres minor, infraspinatus, um, and then this would all attach to. Now on the deltoid, it's going to attach the spine of the scapula. It's going to be a little flatter here where it attaches, and the belly of the muscle is going to kind of pick up. And that's what you're looking for too: is the natural S curves of the body along with the bellies of the muscles which are going to be rounder, the flat areas. Here's a good example in the tricep here. So the tricep too, this is going to go, I think the teres major goes up and underneath the head of the tricep in there, up into your armpit. Anyway, so landmarks. We can sketch with our Damien standard brush. Here's our deltoid. Here's our tricep here. Deltoid attaches like halfway down the humerus, like three fingers below the head of the humerus, maybe. Um, brachialis right here and actually shows up on the other side. Yep. And then uh, biceps, like so. And then brachioradialis goes to his little weirdo thumb. And it looks like he has one too. So it's all fairly standard. Uh, so we'll go ahead and just pull this over. And then here's the extensors. So when you kind of wiggle your fingers 
up and down you can kind of see them kind of dance along the back of your arm and then when you make a fist and stuff that'll be your flexors on the other side this whole area here so a bunch of flexor muscles here and then it goes into little sheath in your wrist your carpal tunnel and then uh, your bony landmark here there's your ulna and then uh, right here so is the humerus you've got the medial and lateral epicondyles of the humerus you can kind of see on both sides uh, this one will probably be like a like a muscle build up around it like a little divot and then this side you might actually see I think a little bump where that might come through anyway speaking of what you're looking for uh, here's your tricep here and then this belly area where the muscle is and actually this will be something like this um, anyway, so the muscle belly is going to be nice and round, and then there's going to be a flat area where tendons and ligaments happen right here, and then pointy areas where your little bony landmarks are. And between all of those is where you'll get, again, you want to look for the natural S-curve of the body, as well as the round and the flat and the... Uh, pointy or bony landmarks. I don't know that they're all pointy, but you get it. And this will at least, not that we're going to, again, make him into Bruce Lee or anything, but it will at least give us the right volumes where they kind of should be. Here, I think this one is the, um, what's that thing back there? Corachiobrachialis. Coracoid process and your scapula on the inside. Something like that for your armpit muscle there. So anyway, I should probably grab my Echor shape. <laughs> Thing. Uh, and also, you know, again, the S curves of wide. So here's the deltoid, uh, and then here's the long curve of that um, arm. And then we want to go higher to lower, you know, so maybe bump it out here, and then maybe bump it out a little lower here where your flexors are. Uh, same thing here, a little bump out where your triceps are, and then maybe a little lower where your biceps are. We'll tuck this into the armpit a little bit more, too. That bicep shouldn't be sticking out that much. There we go. There we go. Little little friendly bicep. A little brachioradialis. And uh, let me get my, what was that, the Anconius? Something like that. I kind of, okay, now I am looking at reference now. Uh, <laughs> so here is that little Anconius lump, I think it's called. And then here is some extensor stuff. Like so, and then again, just making sure first before you go and sketch on, you want to make sure your volumes are probably where they should be. But you can use your sketching to kind of go through and refine where your volumes are. It's, it's easy enough to kind of go through here and move, scale, rotate, mush. If we're being honest, mush into place. And again, we're just kind of using clay tubes to go through and kind of dial this in. And then once you're all done with that. Um, Again, you can control drag to redynamish if you want. Hold down shift. I'm going to turn my Z intensity down just a bit. And we'll just knock back this. But at least, you know, at least our volumes are generally where we want them. It's back here. We don't really need scapula or any of that stuff. And then, uh, kind of the same thing for the legs, although these, uh, I mean, there's, there's some information on there. Uh, we'll just, you know, let's go ahead and dynamesh this. At whatever resolution makes sense. As long as it's not painful to work on. If it's too painful and it's hard to move things around, just lower the resolution. Uh, and we'll go through here and we'll like say inflate his little knobby knees. And then um, kind of the same thing here too. It's like looking for the S curves of the body. Uh, this one I'm going to go into my move brush and then turn on back face masking, which we talked about earlier. Auto masking, back face masking. I have a hotkey for it. It's in my interface so I can see it. And that way, when I'm pulling through, it's only going to pull one side. If I don't have back face masking on, it's going to pull through. So again, back face masking on, we'll pull a little calf out here, little calf down here, little calf out here. And then also, maybe a little, little quads, little hammies, um, little ankles. So high to low, high to low. And then the opposite on here, on the fibula side, it's going to be a little lower. And on the inside, it's going to be a little higher on the tibia side. Okay, now we can turn that off. So there's your 
volumes you're kind of looking for and then you can go through and refine and then sketch in your muscles and then smooth it out uh, like i said in this case it's probably as far as i would need to go and then on the feet here uh, again we're just kind of cruising same deal um dynamesh smooth inflate knobby knuckle knobby knuckle knobby knuckle uh, this is going to be a lot wider so again move brush with back face masking on so our z spheres kind of made this thinner when in fact it should be pretty wide here and then we'll go ahead and pull that up a little bit control drag shift to smooth yay and then one more for the hands so kind of looking at the hands as reference here do i got any good hands there's a good hand again just kind of let me zoom in a little bit here so this here, same thing as the feet. Um, you know, we'll just Dynamesh, why not? Move, move. And then knobby, inflate, inflate, inflate. And then it looks like the ends of the fingers too are pretty knobby. And then we're gonna put some claws in there. And on the other side, let's go ahead and raise the resolution up just a tiny bit. On the inside of the hand here, you can go through and you maybe use a little Damien Standard. Just give it that, just a tiny bit of uh, wrinkles just to kind of inform how this thing functions and work. I'm gonna make this into a little bit more of a thumb. You know what I'm saying? And then again, any sort of reinforcing, reinforcing wrinkles or making sure your volumes for the palm or where they should be. Go in here to clay build up. Knock this back a little bit and then punch it forward just a bit. There's no real bones along the back, but if you want to add just again, just for some form and then on top of this is going to be a bunch of wrinkles it looks like. Uh, as far as the claws themselves go, quick save. And then uh, BI brush insert IMM primitives, hit M, we'll just grab a sphere and we'll just pull one through. And then we'll say split mass points and we'll thin it out and we'll say, okay, this nail is going to go in here and then it's going to go to a point and we're going to shift to smooth it. Maybe on the other side, hold down uh, standard brush. And anytime you push two things together in CG, you'll want to make it look like those two are interacting. If you don't, it's going to be real obvious that it's not real. Let's do a zero mesh half. There we go. Turn off back face masking. All right, so we've pushed these two things together. Now we need to integrate them or at least make them look like they know each other exist, which is something you got to do manually a lot of times in CG. So we're going to alt tap here. Again, more resolution, more resolution. Uh, we'll go through here and we'll put in a little wrinkle and that'll just give this little guy somewhere to sit and again just sell the illusion that these things are aware of each other's existence. Something like this. Uh, and if we want to, uh, I can, you know what, let's do this. Quick save, go into solo mode here. We have, uh, this is a cross-ex symmetry. Um, I can temporarily, let's turn off X symmetry, I'm going to isolate it. And then just looking at this nail, I'm going to look straight down at it. I'm going to say B, create insert mesh new. Oh, <laughs> that'll create an insert mesh brush. Uh, and then you can use that to just go through and drag on the same nail onto the other hands. But of course, uh, it is a crashy day for me today. And I have coffee. Um, let me see. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, do, do, do. Uh, yep, got it. Excellent. Primitive objects like cylinders are more effective to make fingers or a Z sphere. What would you use more? Um, I probably need to use neither. If I'm going to use make fingers, I'm just going to pull in a hand uh, base mesh and just use that. Mm. If you did want to use something, um, 
Yeah, cylinders are fine. In fact, you can make, if you're doing stylized modeling, just making everything out of uh, primitives is another way to go. Instead of using z-spheres, just use a bunch of spheres and put them together in cylinders and whatever makes sense. And I wouldn't mind this so much, except it doesn't seem to be doing any sort of recovered files at all. There you go. Okay, recovered z-tool. In fact, instead of doing the z-tool, let's do the recovered z-project. There we go. That should bring back everything that we were working on. So uh, we have a nail here. Let's try this one more time. We have it isolated after frame. Uh, not that this is a beautiful nail, I'm just doing this as a demonstration. B, green insert mesh, new. Now we have a new brush. Control shift tap to bring these both back. Tap X to go into X symmetry. Go out of solo mode. Whoa. Let me do this. Mirror, mirror and weld. X symmetry. We have a new brush that we've just created called Insert Mesh. We can go through here now and just drag that out and we can just keep using the same mesh. Now as I drag that out, uh, I can go through and for example change that depth. We'll embed this to zero. So when I drag it out it kind of just sits a little closer to the mesh. There we go. So now control drag to unmask, alt tap this to work on it. Turn off line cursor to surface, which is under your preferences edit menu. Preferences draw, preferences edit, I think. And then go through here and knock these back. Yay, all right, all right, all right. And then the little wrist bones and stuff like that. Excuse me. All right. And we're making salacious crumb, by the way. And you know, foot for our A pose, if we are gonna be rigging this, uh, we probably want to give our put put our legs. Uh, how do I explain this? Put our legs on a plane so that it's all in the same plane. You can see how it, it kind of goes out and then in and then down and back around. So I'm gonna just go through here with my move brush. Um, you know what? Maybe. Gosh, let's try bend curve. It's super useful. Put in a couple points here. I'm gonna say you go here. You come back in here. Okay, I think that might work a little bit better. And then for the feet, move it out. There we go. Straight forward. Something like that. All right, I think he's ready uh, to be. Uh, he's in block out. <laughs> okay, so let's do a little bit of fiber mesh. Couple different ways you can do fiber mesh. Um, we still have that, so we just need to load up this real quick. Sorry, Tansy plugin transform texture import. Wait for this drive to kick in. There we go. Um, nope, we don't want to import. We want to load spotlight. There it is. Z. Turn this down. So the head fiber mesh. So we need a little tuft of hair up here and we need little tufts of hair on the corners of the mouth and then of course around here like a little mane. Um, if I want to animate, you can use Z, you can use fiber mesh to create curves and then you can make that like a uh, limbic hair and it'll work fine. But just kind of going through the process in my head, I think the safer bet for me is to go through and do hair cards. So we'll do both. I'll show you how to do, I mean, fiber mesh with its default curves are pretty simple. So you can go through here and you can say, okay, just mask where you want your hair. Make sure, go in here to display properties, double is off. If you have double on, it'll put hair on both sides of the mesh, which you probably don't want. Going in here to tool, uh, fiber mesh. It's like, what am I doing again? Fiber mesh, uh, preview, there we go. Uh, going here to modifiers. Uh, you know what? You can change both of these to white and just kind of look at that that way. And then you can go through here and kind of see the fibers fine. We'll change our max fibers. Um, I'm also going to do the gravity down to zero just so it kind of points straight up. He's got kind of Muppet hair. So I want to just sculpt it in that direction. Uh, coverage is going to thicken those up a little bit. And then also one more thing. Profile, it's they're cards by default, but when you go in here to BPR render, you'll see it gives it a little bit of thickness. That's all underneath your BPR setting. So every time you hit BPR, it'll subdivide it twice and give you more sides. Now, if you go in here to profile sides, it's gonna yell at you saying, hey, it's 
going to render and move faster if you keep these as cards, but you can say, hey, you know what? I actually want to see the geometry, and you can do more than four. You can crank it up however much you want. Also, segments are important. If you're doing long hair or you need you need something to kind of go on an S-curve or something, you're going to need more than just three segments probably because that's basically, you know, here's the length of the fiber mesh. It's going to go one division or one edge loop, one edge loop. So you get one, two, three. That's not a whole lot. So we'll change those segments up to like, I don't know, 10 or 11. You also see when we do that, we're starting to pick up a little bit more of the twist that's in there. Um, it's not terrible. You can keep it if you want, but if you don't want it, you can just take your twist down to zero. Um, if we are, so this is just fiber mesh. Go in here and crank up your max fibers, do whatever you want to, and that's fiber mesh. We're, if we do want to do hair cards, there's two really important things we need to do. One of those is bring in a texture. Um, if you bring in like a star texture, you'll see that it'll actually render transparency as well. Uh, and it's also going root to tip. So along every single one of these fibers, it's going from the root all the way to the tip and stretching that texture along there. Um, and I can change that texture as needed. Um, but I don't really need a texture on here. Uh, I just, but well, I do need a texture on here to tell it, hey, when I convert this from fiber mesh preview to real fiber mesh, give me UVs. But I don't need a star on there. I want to see what I'm doing. So I'm going to go down here to texture map and I'm going to say new texture. It's going to make it white. I'm going to say clone texture. So it just spits it out here into my texture palette. So now I can say, you know what? Just grab a white texture. That's fine. So I have a texture in here. Um, I don't need to scale root or tip, so put these both to one. Um, if I'm if I am doing hair cards, uh, I probably don't need that many, and I probably can, you know, depending on how performant you need to make it. Uh, I can also go in here to coverage. Now there is a width profile in here, so if I crank that coverage up and it's not wide enough, you can go into the width profile and just crank that all the way to the top, and that'll be as wide as it gets. Um, but we don't need it that wide, so. Here's our cards here, uh, maybe a little. Okay, and then we can just comb these. Now we can't comb them yet. And by combing, I mean just moving or brushing them with uh, Z brushes here. Uh, we can go into our length profile, maybe crank that length up a little bit. So here we have our hair cards. So we're gonna say, okay, great. I'm gonna say, if I want to, it's like, okay, I like these settings. I can go ahead and save this as hair cards. Uh, and I can just bring that back in. Okay, so we're ready. So we're gonna say fiber mesh. Again, we have a texture, that's important, except, and then now when we go into subtool, we now have fibers in here. So I can go to BG brush groom hair toss, for example, and go through and comb these into place. Um, if you wanna use just a regular brush, for example, your move brush, just make sure you go in here to fiber mesh. And right now preserve length is off. So when I use my move brush, it just allows me to stretch. I can say preserve length to 100, and now when I'm moving, it won't allow me to move this stuff. Now, another thing too is, on like the groom brushes, brush groom, hair toss, for example, this front collision, just drop that down to a lower number so that it'll allow you to kind of pull up away from the surface. Also, if you have multiple fiber meshes around this area, it's gonna wanna interact with them, so turn them off uh, unless you want it kind of getting jumbled. Uh, okay, so here, uh, I mean, I'm looking at multiple hairstyles. It's just hair. It's just like a little tuft of Muppet hair, so don't overthink it. Um, and also going in here to my move brush and just kind of um, moving stuff around like so. And then using shift to smooth it out. Shift to smooth. Um, you can use turbulence brushes if you need to add a little crinkly in there, but I think this will work just fine. Um, and then move, and then we, you know, we'll preserve length down to 50. So I, I want to preserve length a little, but not too much. Um, you can also go through here and you can clump. So there's a brush groom. Uh, I think there's a clump in here, isn't there? Yeah, groom clumps. Uh, it might be a little iffy. It'll kind of just pick whatever's in the radius and kind of clump it together. In our case, we may want to go through here, just hold down control and paint, and you can mask areas. Um, invert that mask and then just go in here and just use like pinch if you want to kind of manually clump and then move to kind of clump things together smooth although it did kind of pinch their cards which I don't love in that case maybe since I want to pinch the ends of our cards um, if there's a, a way to kind of clump those together yeah I guess it's manually is fine so again control paint 
to grab little sections. You can even make these in their own polygroups. You can hit Control W and make them into their own selectable polygroups. It's not. Oh, we have texture turned on. The texture is now embedded in the geometry. I don't need to look at it. I can just turn that off temporarily so we can see our polygroups here. Um, but the polygroups do exist and they are UV'd now. So the texture will, let me see if I just do pinch, preserve length. Okay, it's not terrible. And again, if they start interacting weird with other areas, just isolate them. And I think they'll act, behave a little more. I don't know. I might, that might just be my imagination. Okay, so here you can also do a visibility hide point to quickly do that without having to resort to um, having to go through and make polygroups and stuff like that if you're not into it. So again, we'll just grab these here. And then again, hide points. And then pinch. Oh, do we have... Uh, well, I think I still have maybe, oh no, we, we crashed. Uh, elasticity, you can try, you know, having claw simulation on if that helps the process. I don't know that it will in this case, but I don't know, give it a shot. Go through here. Sorry. All right, so we've got our hair cards. We've got some clumping going on. Um, smoothing, moving whatever you want to do to make your hair card. So we got this. Now, if I want to change the texture out, uh, I can go through and paint. Essentially, if I go through here and do a texture map new from UV check, it's going to be a bunch of overlapping UVs, but it's essentially going to be root to tip in this direction. So go ahead and turn that texture off. So if I want to, I can go in here to quick save. I can go in here and make a texture really quick. So we can go in here to a plane. God, I'm gonna have to clear this file out. Uh, there's something going on. So I'm gonna export everything as an OBJ and then bring it back in and see if that clears it out. Um, it's more crashing than usual. Anyway, what I was gonna say is, um, luckily it did, and I don't really need the reference anymore, so it's not a huge deal. Uh, let's see, recovered Z tool here. Oh, great, it saved the Z tool that I had just selected, but not everything else we were working on. Uh, okay, we did a quick save though. Okay, quick save. Here's our fibers. Uh, we're going to go through here. We're going to say plane 3D. Make poly mesh 3D. It's just a plane sitting here. I'm going to go to geometry, turn on the smooth modifier, divide this up to, I don't know, a million. And then we can just literally paint um, alt uh, BPA, BPA. Let's go ahead and make this black. So choose a black color. Alt F is my hotkey for color fill, and then we can go through here with our standard brush and literally just paint oops, or BPA, uh, paint with white where we want our hair to go. So we want to do something like this, maybe. Um, we can also just use masking, just mask out the shape and then fill it. Um, whatever you want to do. Always more different ways to skin that cap. Now, with hair cards, what you could do, I might export this and then move the hair cards into different sections so I can have different hair strands. And then, of course, you can do normal maps and, you know, make these whatever you want. There's uh, multiple ways to do hair cardy type stuff. Um, but just to kind of show you, if we want to swap that texture out with something really quickly before I sign off here. Oh my god, come on. F to frame, rotate, show me where it is. So here's a texture. So we're just poly painting on a plane, but this plane has UVs. So if we wanted to, we can go in here to uh, texture map new from poly paint. There we go. Uh, and then I can just clone this off. So it's available to everything in our ZBrush session. So we'll go back here. And now because these things have UVs, I can go in here to texture map and I can select this one. Um, and right now, yeah, it's in the right direction, root to tip. Now it's not transparent, so I can turn transparency on. And then I can go in here and turn on aliased. So now all of these planes have a root to tip. Uh, if I turn it off, you'll see there's the planes, there's the texture. So again, you can use that to your advantage. Uh, and color it and poly paint it however you want. Um, 
Although now that I think about it, if I'm using a texture map, I don't know if it'll be able to polypaint it, but you can just texture it in your external program. Okay, eight o'clock on the dot, nice. Um, we, we got, okay, we did okay on our salacious crumb. Sorry about all the crashing, but we got there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, cool, cool, primitive zombie seller, yes, yes. Um, when should I use posable symmetry? Should I use that with transpose master or without that? Um, I don't tend to use a ton of posable symmetry. I'll get my object almost done and then I'll go and pose it out and then I'll do a little bit of cleanup. Um, I can't remember the last time I was like, oh, I posed it out, but now I want to work on the forearms posed. Um, rarely does that happen. Because when you pose something, your object does different things, right? Your forearms will be twisting in one way and twisting in another way. So posable symmetry in that case doesn't really help that much. So sculpt in a, a pose, pose it out, do cleanup, and never use posable symmetry is basically how I work. Um, your mileage may vary. I, wanna, I don't want to say that my workflows are the only workflows for sure. Cool. All right. Thanks, everybody. Sorry about all the crashing. I'm going to export all these things as OBJ and bring them back in, see if that cleans it out. And uh, I'm going to, yeah, today's Tuesday. I'll, sh I'll finish this guy up on my channel on Thursday. How about that? And uh, cool. Thanks, everybody. Take it easy.